In this presentation, we are going to have the classification of numbers and this lecture is the first lecture of the chapter number systems. So let us move on to our discussion now. Whenever we have a number, we can express it in a complex number form. We all know that the complex number form is A plus I B, where A and B are the real numbers. We will see what are real numbers and I is the imaginary unit and this i is equal to under root minus 1. Now depending on the value of a and the value of b, complex number can be classified into two types. The first one is real number. The complex number will be real when b is equal to 0. When b is equal to 0, the complex number will be equal to a and we already know that a is a real number so we have the complex number as real. Now what if A is equal to 0 and B is not equal to 0? In that scenario the complex number will be equal to IB purely imaginary so the complex number will be imaginary. So the complex number will be real when B is equal to 0 and the complex number will be imaginary when A is equal to 0 and b is not equal to 0. Now we will focus on the real numbers. Real numbers can be classified into two types, rational and irrational and these two types are very important. So what are rational numbers? Rational numbers are those numbers which can be expressed in this form. That is the numbers which we can write as p over q when q is not equal to 0 we call as rational numbers and this p and this q they both are integers so here we have the ratio of two integers in which the integer in the denominator is non-zero now we will talk about the two types of rational numbers the first one we call terminating decimal form of a rational number for example we have 1.5 here you can see that we have only 5 in the decimal place. There is no repetition and there is no continuous decimal numbers. We have just single number in the decimal place. So we can say that the decimals are terminated in this form. So this is terminated decimal form and this we can write as P over Q. We know 1.5 is equal to 3 over 2 which is in this form. So this is the example of terminating decimal form of a rational number. Now we will move on to the second type which is non-terminating but reoccurring decimal form. For example, we have 0 0.3737 and so on. Here you can see that we have non-terminating. The numbers are not getting terminated. They are continuously there but the number 37 is repeated. So this is non-terminating but reoccurring decimal form and this we can also write in p over q form. For example, I will consider this as q, number q. q is the usual representation for rational numbers and uh, now I will multiply both the sides by 100. We will have 100q on the left hand side and on the right hand side we will have 37.37 3, 7 and so on. Now what if I subtract Q from 100Q? On the left hand side we will have 99Q and on the right hand side we will have 37. So Q will be equal to 37 divided by 99 and this is in this form. So I hope you understand both the forms of rational numbers. Now we will talk about irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are not rational numbers. They are the real numbers which can't be expressed as the ratio of two integers. Here in this case, we are expressing the number as ratio of two integers. But in this case, we can't express the real number as the ratio of two integers. For example, pi. We know pi. It is equal to 3.1415 and so on. In this case, you can see that the decimals are non-terminating and also non-repeating. This means we are not having this form or this form and that's why we cannot express pi in this 
form. Similarly, we have Euler's number E. It is equal to 2.718 and so on. Again, we have non-terminating, non-repeating decimals. So this is also irrational because we can't write it in this form. Now talking about other examples, for example, under root 2, the cube root of 11, etc. are other examples of irrational numbers. In these two cases, we cannot simplify them to remove the square root and the cube root to have this form. And the numbers like this we call sorts and the numbers like pi and e we call as transcendental numbers. Pi and e will fall into this category. Root 2, cube root of 11 fall under this category. So irrational numbers will be classified into sorts and transcendental numbers. So we are done with irrational numbers. Now we will again focus on rational numbers. Rational numbers can be classified into two types, integers and fractions. Talking about integers, they are the numbers which are rational when magnitude of q is equal to 1. So these numbers are rational, they can be expressed in this form and here the magnitude of denominator q is equal to unity 1. And the integers we can express on a number line minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. All these are integers. Now these integers can be classified as negative integers represented as i minus and positive integers represented as i plus along with 0. 0 is neither negative integer nor the positive integer. So negative integers plus 0 plus positive integers are the integers. Now this 0 along with the positive integers we call as whole numbers. So 0 along with positive integers gives us whole numbers. And the positive integers, positive integers are also called as natural numbers. Let's summarize what we discussed about integers quickly. Integers are equal to negative integers with 0 with positive integers or natural numbers and 0 along with positive integers or natural numbers forms whole numbers. This means integers will be negative integers along with whole numbers. And the same thing we have here. Integers are classified as whole numbers and negative integers and whole numbers are classified as natural numbers or positive integers and zero. So I hope you now have understanding of all these numbers and now we will shift our focus on fractions. Fractions have three classifications, proper, improper and mixed. So what do we mean by proper fraction? Proper fraction is a fraction when the magnitude of p is less than the magnitude of q. For example, 1 over 3. And what are improper fractions? Improper fractions are those fractions in which magnitude of p is greater than the magnitude of q. For example, 9 over 5. And what are mixed fractions? These fractions are the combination of a whole number and a fraction. For example, we have a fraction 1 over 2 and if we have 2 with 1 over 2 in this form, we have a whole number with a fraction giving us mixed fraction. And this we can write as 5 over 2. 2 multiplied to 2 will give us 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So we have 5 over 2. So 5 over 2 we can write as mixed fraction as 2 1 by 2. So this is all for the classification of numbers and I believe you now have the clear understanding of all these numbers and if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.